forth right now. I want everybody to put your rope down, put your guns down, and report to the pit, the gravel pit. Leave your problems at home, leave your children at home, before taking back underground. I be Bobby Bowden, Wu Tang Clan on your mind one time. Leave your children at home. That is fitting for the two gentlemen that I have here today uh, with a video cast beyond the map. Uh, you know, we will have a joint show. First time we have a joint show. Two fighters from South Shore Sports Fighting in Norwell, Mass. Uh, they're both fighting at Cage Titans 33, April 8th at the Plymouth Memorial Hall. We have pro welterweight Joe Skeletor Giannetti and amateur lightweight Mike, man down, Danella, gentlemen, how are you? I'm good. What's up? Outstanding, man. Outstanding. So, um, man down. What, what does that What does that song mean to you? I know it. You know, behind the behind the scenes, people don't know. Yeah. But what does that song mean to you that we opened up with? Oh, uh, that means easy money. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, I believe you put it out there last show. I was going to come out to it last show for my easy money, but they all ran from me. Uh, I believe you put it out there. Whoever walks out gets a paid. So I guess I'm getting paid. I was like, you know what? It'd be badass if somebody walked out to this song. And yeah, exactly that. I threw it up there online. And I think you you were the first one to like it. I think you were the only one to, to comment. So uh, yeah. it seems fitting, though. It seems fitting for you. So I follow John. What's that? I follow the money. That's right. <laughs> I was just at South Shore. Uh, Mike, where are you walking around at? You looked, you looked, um, I don't want to see. You were like, I'm 168 looking huge, though. <laughs> Check that out. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and uh, that is now set. It's not a catch weight. It's at 155. Um, so th this is the weight class you want to be at, right? Or did you want to eventually make it to 45? Uh, no, 55 is where I live. Uh, the speed and power of 55 can't be matched right now, so that's where I live. And Joe, you're fighting. Last fight was at 175. Um, your opponent actually, what is it, Gary Shepard, uh, yep. he, his last fight was at 175, but he's never fought. Uh, he's mostly fought at like 195. Uh, you're coming back up. You fought once at 45, right? Did you I was supposed to fight at 45, but my opponent pulled out the week out. Oh, but and all your what the honor. And all your other fights have been at uh, right around welterweight, which is um, that's what this fight is. Yeah, because no pro 55ers will fight him. That's correct. Because none of the pro 55ers will fight him. Who, who are some of the names that have been thrown out at 55? Dude, let's put Bill, it out there. Bill, Bill doesn't like when we do that, so we won't call out names, but I'm telling you right now, he has to fight heavier guys because the 55 pros in New England will not fight him. Now, look, Joe, we know that, that Mike will sell, will sell whether it's an ice cube to an Eskimo or whether it's, it's his fight. Uh, how much is he selling the idea that guys don't want to fight you? Um, I mean, it's pretty easy to sell there, but he's just hyping it up even more. I mean, if you, if you think that a 55 will fight me out of your mind, so it's true. I've that's got this is my fourth fight at 170. That's great, it, but this isn't really where you want to be. Uh, no, no, no. So, what what was it? And we Mike Polver does an amazing job matching fights. What was it to where he grabbed somebody from outside the area and brought him in still at 170? Um, I mean, we, we saw a couple names of 55. We thought about it. Nobody wanted to do it. So just to broaden my horizons to make sure I found an opponent, I said, screw it, we'll do 170. I don't want to, but I'll fight anybody. I mean, I just want to fight better than sitting in the stand. Plus, it sort of made it easy because Gary's coming from the same school as the headliner. I think it's Tech Fitness and Academy. Um, yeah. You, you know, he's one in three. Um, and like I said, he, he's always been heavier I think, uh, I think uh, appearance-wise, you're going to seem to be in better shape. But you never know. I mean, there's some big guys that have good cardio. Uh, you think it's going to be easier, the fact that you're making the move, not really the move, but going up and him needing to come down? Or do you think it's going to be sort of even? I'll be, I guarantee I'll be stronger. So much stronger. Cool. So, and, and Mike? <laughs> so, we got 0-2. Uh, 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 Jose uh, Attilas, and uh, this is a, a rescheduled bout from just last event. And yeah, he was a guy to pull out. 
He's the second uh, guy. Second uh, the guy to pull out. Um, so w- were you sore after all that? All the pulling out? Yeah, I was pissed off. I'm still pissed off. <laughs> no, because this should be my third fight. I should be going on 3-0. Right, right. You know? so now he's going to have to pay for that. This is going down. He can't breach it this time. And uh, I'm really excited because I don't don't run. He actually asked for me. Nice, nice. And uh, so, do you take – you... go ahead. I'm so sorry. Just gonna, I'm just going to show him why that's probably the worst move of his career. <laughs> And I'll take this opportunity now to wish him to wish him luck because this will be the last fight of his MMA career. Let's reverse it. So you're excited that it's going to happen. Fingers crossed, right? Are you nervous it might not happen? Uh, because, I mean, go ahead. Of course, it's happened to me already. I, I mean, you know, like I said, what pisses me off is I got two kids and a wife. I miss dinners. I miss bedtime stories. You know, I miss morning bus time sometimes because I'm doing two a days. And I may not be a pro, but I train like a pro so I can run through guys like this who think it's okay to train two, three times a week and call somebody like me out. That's not okay. Goes for both of you because where you guys are in your careers, you're still very, very young in your careers. So uh, in the last five months. For the record, his combined amateur and pro is 10 and 0. But yes, yes, and, and so you, you you know it's been five months, Mike, since you've gotten into the cage. How how much have you uh, matured as a fighter, or where are we going to see the biggest uh, improvement? I mean, we only saw two rounds so far of what you have to offer, but where are we going to see the biggest improvement? And same thing, Joe. Two months, ten fights, you're still significantly evolving. Uh, where where should we see the biggest improvements? Go ahead, Joe. Uh- Strength, speed, stand-up. I mean, none of my fights have really been standing. I know Shepard's a Taekwondo black belt, so I know he likes to kick. But, I mean, I can kick, too. And nobody's seen it, but it's there, I promise. And Mike, yourself? Uh, every facet of, the, of a cage fighter I'm better than this guy at. And the reason being, I train with guys like JoJo, Manny Bermudez, Jim Manning, Zach D. Sabatino. Cheer! <laughs> you know, I train with guys like that every day. And, and it makes me better as a fighter that, you know, I just lift it up all together. You're looking at 30 fights between those five guys right there. And that's just the beginning of the people that I train with at South Shore. So each day I'm in the gym, I'm getting better each day. So I'm really a nightmare for a guy who doesn't train like us. And not a lot of guys do train like most South Shore amateurs. South Shore sport fighting amateurs train like pros because we have the best pros in New England in there. So we have a good model to go off of. You know what I mean? Yeah. We see what gets we see what gets you to be undefeated at, in this part of the country, and so we have you know we have a good model to go with. And with us as amateurs, me and all, all the other amateurs that are on this card, we're so grateful for the pros we have at Social Sport Fighting. But most of all, for the mad scientist Bill Mahoney, there's nobody like him in, in MMA in the Northeast. He's the best coach there is. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking with Bill just the other day after media day and there is one coach that stands out with Bill and his mindset and that's Jeremy from Fighting Arts Academy in Springfield. They just have a different mindset for their fighters, for the growth of their fighters and being real with their fighters. Uh, and, and, And that's, that's what you have to do. Are you guys familiar with each other just from the gym or do you guys, are you guys familiar prior to meeting at South Shore? We met at the gym and now it's the greatest romance (laughs) MMA history in the Northeast. (laughs) That is is great. Oh, I'm seeing those shirts now. Look at that. That's right. That's right. I got a question as a matter of fact, uh, Joe, because I know you're 21, right? Have you ever seen He-Man in Skeletor? Because I know you're so young. I don't know if you, uh, you know, you've probably seen it on Netflix or something. Oh, it's on, it used to be on Boomerang. <laughs> As a flashback cartoon. That's great. <laughs> That's great. That's great. So, yeah, man, it's, you're 21, as if I'm telling you how old you are, but uh, 21, 10 fights, uh, 3 pro, uh, I think there were six finishes there as, as an amateur, uh, three first round finishes now as a pro, and you took your first fight. What was it? All um, he- Wait, all, all those first round finishes at, against heavier guys. 
and and your your first fight was only a month after you turned 18, right? Yep. And, but I I know you from from mm-hmm. before that when you were training or excuse me uh competing at Ammo, uh yep. in, in your grappling tournaments. But I'm gonna bring something up even earlier than that, and I'm told that your first wrestling match in high school was a, a, in a heavyweight. Is that right? I was told you were a little bit of a chubby kid, and it was against Brendan Battles. Is that right? I want you to break. Is that circulating somewhere? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> we should get out there, Joe. What was your high school wrestling record? Uh, Give it to like us. Seventeen and like forty. <laughs> seventeen and forty. Hear that, fifty fivers in New England. It was seventeen and forty wrestling. It's not that good. <laughs> <laughs> and did you did you wrestle all four years? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And so it was battle. Were you, were you, what, what, what was it? Do you have older brothers or? Um... Uh, older brother, but he never wrestled. So I actually tried out for the basketball team and I didn't make it. So the wrestling coach was watching tryouts and said, hey, why don't you try it out? I did it for a week. And then somebody got cut from the basketball team and was like, hey, we want you on the team. And I was already addicted to wrestling. So I was like, no, no way. So I did that. I lost my first wrestle off. I weighed 230, so I got stuck going at heavyweight. And <laughs> no clue what was going on. I walked on the mat, and a grown ass man, Brendan Battles, walked on the mat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That is great. But uh, hey, man, that, that's cool. You persevered. Oh, wait, so your record all throughout high school is what? 17 wins and 40 losses. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to make that a quote somewhere. Yeah, no. What's that? <laughs> I don't know what everyone's so scared of. <laughs> so, I mean, the... 12 of those wins were my senior year. <laughs> What's that? 12 of those wins were my senior year. I don't know if that's something to be excited about or if you should have spread those out. <laughs> but you had a lot of success. When was your first grappling? Or when did you start with Style Shore? And when was your first grappling match? How did you do then? Um, after I graduated, I waited the whole summer. That September, I started training at South Shore. A month later, I did Naga in Boston. I actually got third. Um, I only had a couple matches, but I couldn't get anybody off my back. The kid was on my back the whole match. He didn't tap me out, which was good, but I just couldn't move. I had no clue where to go. Um, And then I think Ammo was actually my next tournament after that, and I faced heavier guys, and I ended up getting first place both by triangles. And, Mike, how how much experience prior to your first fight did you have? Um, as far as mixed martial arts or martial arts, period. Because I know we talked, we talked last time, and you said when you were younger, your mouth got you in a little bit of trouble. But and and it was your father, I believe, that I, got you. My dad got me into combat sports, and uh, I didn't quit. coming to MMA. I've only been doing MMA for about a year now. Let's say you guys are the matchmakers. So this should be exciting. Let's say you guys are the matchmakers in New England from guys up from from. Maine and Vermont that compete mainly for Neff all the way down to Rhode Island for guys who do train for or fight for CES and everybody in between. What are some matches that you think need to be made? Nina Bennett versus Manny Bermuda. Yes, that's the only Time thing. the dotted line. <laughs> Just do it. Hey. We've got a handful of guys that want to fight Pete and Pete doesn't want to fight any of them. How is Talia? I'm pronouncing her name correctly, right? So this is now two consecutive training camps, if not longer, that she's had to to deal with this intensity. Now, our last interview, you said this does not get turned off. So how is she dealing with <laughs> Joe? How is she dealing with this uh, intensity? Well, you know, she's she's awesome about it. She really is. I mean, I'm I'm a handful at all times <laughs> until until I go to bed at night. You know, so. She deals with me day in and day out, and you know she she's with the kids most of the time, especially during camps because I'm doing two a days with the pros and everything, and, and it makes it tough. And, and you know some nights are really late, some mornings are really early, you know, and there's a lot of crap in between. But you know she she's my voice some days. Some days I'm like, no, nah, I'm gonna stay home. The kids miss me. She's like, go to the gym. The, you know the kids are fine. Go to the gym. You only miss an hour. You know things like that. She drives me. And she's cool with it. And not just that, she's a real MMA fan. Like, she is a true MMA sport fan. So, if anything, she really, you know, she loves the fighters coming over. She, You know what I mean? During, for the fight, she likes cooking for them and shit, you know. She enjoys that stuff. 
That's her. Is is there an outside um, support system for you, Joe? You know, somebody who never shows up to the gym or not necessarily doesn't show up to the gym, but it's not necessarily involved in your fighting side uh, within the gym, but is still there to support you, girlfriend or, or uh, mom. Is there somebody that, that is there for you the same way? Uh, everybody. All my friends, like whenever I see them, they just want to know about my next fight. They want to know how training is going. They always ask. My girlfriend, she's always there. Mm. My dad just likes to give me shit because he doesn't want to see me get knocked out. <laughs> but that's a different story. He's a handful. <laughs> um, but you know, everybody that's around me, everybody always asks. They always want to know how they can help, if I need anything, um, anything that can get me through the fight camp because they want to see me do good when they come to Memorial Hall. That's right. And so I, I know you had a lot of fans, Mike, in the stands uh, that – that we're disappointed not to be able to see you. And you guys are, I mean, you guys aren't very far from Plymouth Memorial Hall. So you guys are always able to bring a crowd. So I'm sure sell a lot of tickets. Uh, let those fans know how to get in contact with you. I know on Facebook uh, for Joe Gianetti, it's Joe Skeletor. Uh, Gianetti is your like page. If you want to throw out your personal page, you can. But if want, people want to get a hold of you, is there a Twitter and is there an Instagram they could reach out to you as well? Uh, Twitter and Instagram, it's Janetti MMA. Look it up. Same thing on both. Um, you can hit me up on there um, whenever you want. Snapchat? Snapchat? I don't remember what my Snapchat name is. <laughs> uh, that's, that's fair. And Mike, same thing, man. If you just if you just want to let everybody know um, how, to, how they can get a hold of you, how they can get tickets from you, uh, the best way to do that. Yep. You just search Mike Danella on Instagram, Twitter. Facebook or Snapchat, and I'm the only one around. There's only one man down, Sean. I'm the only one to pop up. Now, real quick to, to mention that, um, everybody, I want you to follow along for this event and and for anything, if you want to be entertained, it's hashtag man down. Uh, follow this this event. It's hashtag Cage Titans 33. Of course, always Combat Sports Nation. Uh, hashtag Have Combat Sports Nation. Hashtag South Shore Sport Fighting and hashtag Skeletor. Uh, SSSF for South Shore Sports Fighting. Um, do you have a message for your uh, opponent, Mike? Um, you know, you you make it to weigh-ins. I, I'm alive. <laughs> I can't wait to punch Jose in his fucking eye. Uh. That's good. <laughs> and... and um, so, Joe, same thing, man. Do you have a message to the fans or even your opponent uh, specifically uh, maybe of uh, prediction or just a vision of the outcome? My hand's going to get raised. That's all I can guarantee. <laughs> That's great. Guys, it was awesome. Uh, it was great to have you guys. Uh, Thank you. You know, man. I, I wish there maybe a couple. Yeah, hey, wait, real quick. You're the you're the true champ, Sean. What you did what you did against Paul Vale was fantastic. I'll take I'll take the, the guillotine, Paul Vale. That's fine. You choked me out, but he got you with that arm by bro. Sorry, Mikey. Listen, this is the this is the bullshit thing about it, is that people are saying, well, I don't want to say people are saying it's a fluke. The guys who were there saw um you know, people play that style. I'm the asshole who turtles up in hopes that people come and play with me. I'm, I wasn't playing that bullshit. If somebody is comfortable enough to turtle up, why the fuck are you going to go over to them? They obviously feel comfortable with, with that. I mean, eventually eventually he came and sat down on his ass and came towards me because he knew I wasn't going to... I mean, I attacked with that front headlock, and then I was like, you know what? Let me just get off. Let me just see what happens. And, Good on you. That was beautiful. And, and I mean, look, you play possum. Don't don't tell me uh, <laughs> every squirrel got every squirrel's got a nut or gets a nut or or whatever these fucking uh, guys are saying. You play possum because you think your opponent is easy. And when hey, you, get, you know what this sounds like to me? This sounds like a beautiful hash, intermission grappling match. Yeah. Hashtag. hashtag I, I've already, Sean. I, I've already hashtagged it up. It's hashtag Cage Titans 34 hashtag Media Day. So, uh, yeah, I have no problem, man. And if he beats me, great job. You know, great job. But, uh, this yeah, next time we're getting a video. That that's great, and, and that's what I that's what I look forward to. And all I can remember before beforehand is you and I, Joe. We made that eye contact, and you said, "Do you want me to film it?" I was like, "I 
don't care. And Mike, you said it didn't get filmed because you thought it was going to be Pulverteen time within a minute. So you're a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> so and listen, I want to tell the fans, this is what it's like when you're able to get down in front of people, in front of gyms. And when you have that, um, that relationship is you're able to have these conversations, the interviews don't feel like interviews. They feel like just busting balls and shooting the shit. And I thank you guys. Look forward media day. Cage yeah, time yeah. is 34. Um, weigh-ins, right? What's that? We'll see you at weigh-ins. Uh, yes, we, we will be at weigh-ins. Um, going live probably with Cage Titans on Cage Titans wall. We'll get the video to where we can hopefully get a face-off video. And uh, guys, awesome. Thank you for your time. South Shore Sports hey, Fighting. And uh, we appreciate Combat Sports Nation. Follow us on Instagram. Watch us on YouTube, check us out on Facebook, visit us on Twitter, and stay tuned.